Well, hello there. Got my walking stick tonight. I haven't gone walking for a while with my walking stick. Welcome, welcome. This is the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade Sunday school class. My name is Mr. B, also known as Bruce Ehrlich. And we're talking about walking with God tonight. Um, first thing we like to do in this class is pray. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us. I pray that you bless the reading of your word tonight. Help us to learn more about how to walk with you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, I got a buddy with us tonight. Um, this is called Salvia Officinalis, a uh, common name, sage. And sage is a culinary herb. It means you can use it for cooking. And it's also a medicinal herb. Um, one thing I just learned about it is you can make tea out of it. It's an anti-inflammatory, which is, we're talking about some inflammatory stuff tonight. So sage might be a good thing to have around later on. Um, our quote for tonight is, I have loved to hear my Lord spoken of, and wherever I have seen the print of his shoe in the earth, there I have coveted to put mine also. This is by John Bunyan, a 17th century English writer and preacher, most famous for his, uh, as the author of the novel, The Pilgrim's Progress. Our first reading tonight, is from 1 Samuel. And we're reading tonight from Cheryl's Bible, the Life Application Study Bible. And let's see, we get 1 Samuel here. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 10 and 11. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried unto the Lord all that night. All right. Uh, then we're beginning looking at Genesis, Genesis chapter 6. We'll see how this works out in just a minute here. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6 say, The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. All right, so we got a class question for you. What does the Bible mean when it says that the Lord was grieved and his heart was filled with pain? Behavior is important. What I think and say and do affects everyone around me, and it affects the heart of God. In Awana Cubbies, we teach the three and the four-year-olds that sin is anything we think in our mind, say with our mouth, or do with our hands that makes God sad. If walking with God, having a relationship with God, is important to me, then how I make God feel is important to me. And if I love God, I will want to pass it on. I will complete his love in me by loving others. All right. So we've got another reading for you this time in the Gospel of Mark. Let's see, the Gospel of Mark. Here we go. And we're in Mark chapter 12, 
verse 28 through 31. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Here we got some red ink. This is Jesus talking. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Okay, so we're back in Genesis now. Genesis 6. And verses 7 and 8. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals, and creatures that move along the ground, and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. All right, I think we got verse 8 here. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Okay. A class note for you. This I know. No one loves me more than God, my Lord, my Savior, and my Creator. Get this thing going for you there a little bit. Therefore, no one feels more pain when I sin, then God. The more I understand how much God loves me, the more I will want to stop causing God pain by sinning. When we sin, we cause pain in the heart of God. If we had any idea how much pain we were causing in the heart of God, we would stop sinning. We have talked about in this class the fact that there is no love where there is no choice. Today, I would like to propose that there is no love where there is no pain. That is to say, you cannot truly love someone without experiencing pain when bad things happen to them. Sin is always bad. Okay, so we got a reading from Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Let's see. There we go. Ephesians 4, 28 through 30 says, He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Okay. And back to Genesis. Genesis 6, we're going to read verse 9. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, there you go. Okay, we got a little Mr. B story for you. 
was always fun. Oh, and by the way, we've got a little, something you don't see very often anymore. I stuck it out there in the foreground for you. We used to call these uh, bookends back in the days when we had lots of books. And this is one of my mom's old bookends. It, at the bottom there, it's kind of hard to read now. It's a little worn, but it says, uh, I think it says, Jesus, Savior, Pilot Me. I think that's what it says. Uh, anyway, back to the Mr. B story. Many years ago, before Cheryl, my wife and I, got married, there was a huge park with hiking trails and paved walkways near Cheryl's apartment. We were young and we loved to walk side by side. Walking with someone and talking with someone is a great way to get to know them. Okay, let's see. Noah walked with God. So we got a reading for you from Hebrews now. I always love it when we get a reading from Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews. There we go. We got Hebrews 11, 6 and 7. I actually think we're going to flip-flop the order. Let's, let's do something from Genesis here. Last minute change of plans. Genesis 6, 10 and 11 says, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. All right, so now let's look at Hebrews 11, 6 and 7. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. All right. So we've got a little study note for you. And like I said, this is a study Bible. Um, and so we're going to look at a little note they did here for uh, what we just read here, uh, Hebrews 11, uh, verse 7. And it says, Noah experienced rejection because he was different from his neighbors. God commanded him to build a huge boat in the middle of dry land. And although God's command seemed foolish, Noah obeyed. Noah's obedience made him appear strange to his neighbors. Just as the new beliefs of Jewish Christians undoubtedly made them stand out. As you obey God, don't be surprised if others regard you as different. Your obedience makes their disobedience stand out. Remember, if God asks you to do something, he will give you the necessary strength to carry out that task. Okay. Got a reading from Genesis. Genesis 6, 12 and 13 say, God saw how corrupt the earth had become. For all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Okay, so we have now... Second Peter, all right. Come on, Second Peter. There we go. Second Peter, 
2, 4 through 9 says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men, for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment. Wow continually continuing their punishment. Okay, so we have a definition for you. Here we go. Lawlessness. Lawlessness is a rejection of God. To be lawless is to be contrary to the law or to act without regard for the law. According to the Bible, the root of all lawlessness is rebellion. More and more, we are seeing the honoring, respect, and even celebration of the wicked. Notorious sinners are now considered men of renown, just as they were in the days of Noah. Why do we honor and show respect for those who have done evil. Okay, so we got a reading for you from Matthew. Gospel of Matthew. Let's see if we get that. There's Mark. There's Matthew. Okay, Matthew 24, verses 36 through 39. There we go. No one knows about the day, I'm sorry, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. This is Jesus speaking, it's in red ink here. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, People were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. All right, so we got another reading for you from Genesis, Genesis 6, and this is 14 through 18. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long. 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to be within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter in the, 
you, I'm sorry, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. Okay, so now we got a definition for you. The word is covenant. A covenant is a conditional promise made to humanity by God, as revealed in Scripture. God promised to keep Noah and his family alive. Later on in chapter 9, God promised never to flood the entire earth again. Okay. Uh, our last couple of readings for you. This is one's from Genesis 6, 19 through 21. And it says, You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. All right. So we got our last reading now is from 2 Peter, way at the end, 2 Peter 3, 9 through 14. Here we go. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promises, I'm sorry, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. All right. So we got our class roundup, something we started a couple weeks ago. When my wife Cheryl was little, she was very concerned about not hurting her mom's feelings. Cheryl was very aware of all that her mother did for her and how much her mother cared for her. My wife loves to tell stories about this. When we as Christians really get to know our Heavenly Father and spend time walking with Him, getting to know him. We will get to be like my wife Cheryl when she was little. We will care deeply about our Heavenly Father. We will not want to do anything to grieve him or cause pain in his heart. Walking with God means spending time with him, taking him wherever we go, and being concerned about what pleases him. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. Pray that you bless the time we have in your word this week. Help us to walk with you. Help us to take you wherever we go, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.
right. Have a good week walking with the Lord. Take your walking stick.